Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be spilling the tea on Shambhala Music Festival. I'm so excited. I just got back two weeks ago from this festival and it is a festival very near and dear to my heart. My first Shambhala was in 2008 and I've been, this was my fifth time so I don't go every year. My last one was in 2014 actually so it had been a minute, but I was so grateful to be able to attend this year's festival. Where I live now, I'm only six and a half hours away, whereas before it was like a 20 something hour drive to get there. So today I just want to give you my full review, the ins and outs, kind of get to the nitty gritty. Um, and of course, this is just my personal experience and everyone's going to have a different experience. So this is just mine. So let's get right into it. Firstly, let's start with the location. Shambhala is located just outside of a very tiny town called Salmo, BC in the West Kootenays. I usually tell people when they ask that it is near Nelson because a lot of people know where Nelson is, but they don't know where Salmo is. It's a very, very small town and it is on a family farm. So it is a very big property, but it is a family farm. There is only one road to get in and one to get out. And I feel like that gives it a very homey kind of vibe. It's usually the third week of July. And typically, you know, you should prepare for any kind of weather, but typically it is very, very hot. The sun was shining every day. It was 30 or more each day that we were there. So it was very, very hot. So you should definitely plan for that. It's also very dusty. The dust on the festival this year was on a whole other level. Um, so that's another thing that you might want to consider. A lot of people that I know got sick this year. I didn't. I felt better than ever, which is odd because I'm so sensitive to dust normally. While I was there, there was some sneezing happening, but overall I felt great and had a really good recovery, surprisingly. So just something to note. Now, the next thing I wanted to go over was the cost. So they do a couple tiers. They have an extra early bird, which I believe is already sold out. I think it's sold out at the festival. And that runs you about $480. The early bird runs you $495. And then the GA, which is what we got, will run you $525. So that is just your cost for your ticket. However, there is a lot of extra add-ons. So how Shambhala works is the music starts on Thursday, but that's only two of the stages that are open. This year, we actually got there Thursday. We left here Wednesday night. Typically, you want to get in on, you know, as early as possible. This year was kind of chaotic. Uh, most people I know were, were there on Tuesday or Wednesday. So if you want to get in on Tuesday, it's $160. If you want to get in on Wednesday, it's $120. This is per person, not per car. And if you want to get in on Thursday, it is $70. So that's another thing you want to consider when you're planning this out. It's always better to go early. Uh, looking back, I would have probably rather come on Tuesday or Wednesday, but this year was also so different from other years that I've been going. And then also the camping. So there is some free camping um, in Starlight, Sunshine, and Meta. The previous years I went to Shambhala, I always camped in Meta. This year we were in Sunshine. We were prepared for that, which you will be in the blazing hot sun when you camp there. So definitely prepare for that. And then they do offer in Starlight extra to camp with your vehicle. So if it's just a regular size vehicle, it's $100. Oversize is $180. And same thing in Sunshine. And that's what we had planned to do. We were planning to camp with our vehicle um, just to make things easier on us. And by the time we got to the gate, they were like, you can't. And I'll get into a little bit more of what happened with us after. But just something else to consider, get there early. And then of course they do offer like Shamba lodging, they have yurts, um, glamping, glamping. <laughs> um, but it'll run you a lot. So if you just would like a single campsite, um, that'll run you $995. The glamping package is 2,000. Uh, a powered RV site is $2,495. And a yurt is 3000 
Um, there are some other options, but also remember there's also taxes and fees on there. So in my opinion, it is just ridiculously overpriced. But if you have the means and maybe you're coming from another country or you're coming from far away or coming by plane, that might be a really good option for you. Just in my opinion, I would never do that. <laughs> That's just me. So you also will have to factor in, you know, your travel and your food costs, gas, you know, if you are flying in. So it can add up pretty quickly. I don't even know how much we spent this year. I, I didn't really like keep track of my budget, but it'd be adding up real quick. Okay, so the experience. So when we got there, I was also under the impression that most of the people were already at the festival. Uh, but the line was absolutely ridiculous this year and I know a lot of people say like the lineup is part of it and I wholeheartedly agree when you go to this festival it's so different from any other camping festival uh, that I've been to the people that you were in line with you become friends with them it's like a whole little community uh, I feel like everyone kind of becomes family real quick. So it is like we met a lot of cool people in line. However, the longest before this year that I waited in line, apart from when I knew, like when I was coming in um, the Wednesday night, when they wouldn't actually open the festival until Thursday, this was back in the day, we knew we would be in line for a very long time. We were in line for 11 hours. And remember, this is after driving. We left at 11.30 p.m drove six and a half hours and we waited in line all day so that was crazy i've never waited in line that long i feel like it could have been better organized it is what it is like we still made the best out of it we put up one of our sun canopies we got some spray bottles and just kept cool because it was insanely hot we made some new friends and we ended up finally getting to the gates around 5 p.m. and by that point they told us that we could not not only could we not camp with our car but they parked us all the way at the very end they told us we had to like carry all of our stuff in kind of half prepared for that like we had a wagon and stuff but there were no camping spots so no one really knew what was going on it was very chaotic and for two hours we literally wandered around looking for a spot pleading with other people to let us camp with them and that was very mentally taxing i was almost ready to give up at that point i was like i am i'm never coming here again like this is absolutely ridiculous um and we didn't get to camp with our friends but after a while we did find them a spot we found ourselves a spot a little farther away and we made it work but then after that if we would have just held on a little bit longer we could have camped with our car because people just started doing it because what else are you supposed to do there was literally no room anywhere so that was kind of a bit of a bummer it's like you pay to get in early but you really just pay to get in line so that's one thing that i feel like could be handled a little bit better on their end it is only one road, so I do understand that, you know, they can only do what they can do, but apparently last year was like that too from what I've heard. Also, I really feel like they oversold this year, and some people were saying that because some people were still using their COVID um, tickets, this and that, like there was a couple other reasons for it. At the end of the day, I do think they overshot, and... I don't think the festivals really got the infrastructure to hold as many people as it did this year. But at the same time, they have opened up some of the stages and I never had a problem finding a space to dance. It wasn't like EDC where it was like shoulder to shoulder for, oh, there was a lot of times at EDC where I was just like, what is going on? They have been doing the work to try to like open up some areas, but also like they've expanded the Shamba Lodging, which takes away from the Meta Camp thing and I just feel like there's a little bit of gouging going on but I mean I mean if you have a festival like this I guess you can get away with it it's just unfortunate and uh yeah I, I feel like the the more this festival goes on like the more you pay the less you kind of get um that's just my opinion but I will say that once we settled in and our nervous systems had a chance to just settle uh, we had an incredible festival. 
met so many amazing people. I feel like just the community aspect of this festival is unlike a lot of other festivals that I've been to. I love that it is a dry festival, so there's no alcohol and that makes it such a nice vibe like people aren't getting too out of hand in that way it just kind of mellows things out and of course there are people that somehow find a way to sneak it in but like security will search you but yeah we just we didn't bring any alcohol in we kind of stick to their ethos and yeah, we had an amazing time. So let's move on to the music. So there's six stages and yeah, it's a lot of stages. First Thursday is when they open up the amp and the living room stage. So the living room is the stage that's on the beach, also known as the beach stage. I used to always call it that. I would say they play a lot of house music and um, in the past I've seen a lot of like reggae and down tempo. Um, hip-hop that kind of thing there and it's a very cozy environment you have like lampshades and just like just the way that it's set up it, it feels like a cozy living room outdoor living room so I do enjoy that stage I didn't spend a ton of time there this year the amp is kind of right in the central like downtown Shambhala that's always a party we were really looking forward to seeing ski tour there um, on the Thursday but we did not make it on time so it's a cool stage again that's not one I spend a ton of time at it really just depends honestly on the year and who's playing and what the vibe is what my mood is so those two stages open up on Thursday and Thursday downtown was crazy because there's you got everybody who have just arrived and you can feel the excitement building but downtown was freaking packed both stages were very packed. I've never seen so many people there in my life. <laughs> so it was kind of a neat experience just to walk around, have a chill night. I kind of warmed up, did some stretching, did a little bit of shuffling, and we packed it in pretty early. Then on the Friday, you've got the other stages opening up, and each stage has their own kind of opening ceremonies. So I have not gone to many of the opening ceremonies i i actually performed it's now the grove but it used to be called the labyrinth stage and i performed at the opening ceremonies to that a number of years ago um i think they still even though the stage is different and it's different people running it now i think they've kind of kept the same type of vibe the grove is a lot more chill um it's pretty easy to get lost in there like that stage you can just like go in circles and it's kind of fun actually to get lost in there i really like that stage i this year j pod honestly was the only artist that i saw that i really liked there every other time we went there for of the trees it was just super packed but it is overall like a really nice kind of chill I don't know how to describe it. I personally miss the labyrinth stage. I like trance and I like side trance, so that's more my jam. But the Grove, I've seen some amazing artists. Like I've seen Emancipator play there. I've seen Opio play there. So it it does have its charm. This year, J-Pod was amazing and just crushed that set. So moving on, we've got the Village, which is kind of the bass stage. You hear a lot of drum and bass, uh, trap, and dubstep that kind of thing i spent a fair amount of time there this year which is surprising but there was some really good acts i saw wilkinson who i love so much that dmb set was just everything and some of the other highlights was quicks our friends brought us there and put us on quicks so that was actually a lot of fun i loved it and uh, BTSM, I've seen them four times, but seeing them in the village was just another level. Like that was really, really cool. And yeah, I saw, I would pop in and out of there from time to time. So the village is a really cool stage. I love the setup of the village. It's just got a very unique look to it. Um, I'll post pictures on here. My two favorite stages I'd have to say <laughs> is Fractal Forest and the Pagoda. So Pagoda is kind of like main stage. There is a lot of good techno there, house. There's not really any like genre specific um, thing about the Pagoda. Like it could be anybody. A lot of the headliners are there. John Summit was there. I just love that stage. I love the lasers. I love the look of it. I 
love the music most of the time there. It's the stage I'd say I spent most of my time at. Between that and Fractal Forest, the Fractal Forest has always been like really special to me. It's just funky and it's kind of like a 360 type situation stage where like the dance floor is a 360 but the stage only faces one side which is fine with me i don't mind dancing in, in like the back and just having all the room to dance it's really really cool in there i feel like when you walk in there it's just got something to it just something about being in the trees i just feel like it's very wook in its nature. We ended up going to the opening of that stage for Freddie J. It was so freaking fun. We had a blast um, and that was my first time being able to experience the opening of a stage. So yeah, those are all the six stages. They do have a couple like um, non-official like renegade stages. I feel like they close those down at a certain time. One very special thing about this festival is their harm reduction is literally light years ahead. I know I just went to Base Coast as well and that's a whole other ball game. I'm actually still wearing both of my wristbands for Shambhala and Base Coast. I told myself I would take them off at the end of August and just have a little closing ceremonies of the summer but the harm reduction at Shambhala is some of the best uh, that I've ever seen and experienced, whether it's like ground control, um, their security, they have, each stage kind of has uh, people in the crowd kind of looking out. And also everyone is looking out for one another there. I mean, I can't say everybody, but so many of us are always like, if you see something, you do what you can to help in any situation. So that's something that I feel really sets Shambhala apart. People should feel safe at festivals and I feel like Shambhala really takes care of their attendees. So yeah, they have substance testing and all of the information that you could possibly need to be safe. There's also places like the sanctuary where a lot of people might end up if they, you know, went a little too far, um, took a little bit too much and just need some support and Honestly, it's really a safe space where you are just kind of held and you can even just pull up to the sanctuary yourself like if you're feeling overwhelmed or you just need like a breather. It's a very amazing space. I actually haven't pulled up to the sanctuary. I think I was I think I checked it out one year my first or second year and I'm sure it's changed so much but I've heard nothing but amazing things yeah just the intention behind it and I, I think Shambhala does a very amazing job with their harm reduction it's just it's on another level food options I always bring my own food I like to eat a specific way um, so I brought all of my own food there was only one time that I uh, went to a vendor and I just got the, I got some tandoori chicken um, one of the days, but they have tons of good food vendors there. Pizza, pasta, um, whatever your jam is, I'm pretty sure tacos. Yeah, I've heard really good things about the food. You expect to pay about $20 per like meal or a dish that you order. Yeah, it's pretty standard, I feel like, in these times. Yeah, just bringing snacks is always, like, good or just, uh, like, dry, non-perishable stuff so that you can, you know, get your main meals at the festival, but then you can kind of, like, snack and do your thing. Um, it's always a good idea, but yeah, I like to just bring a stove, everything, cook all my meals, and that works very well for me. Uh, the bathrooms and the showers, um, I've never taken a shower at Shambhala, like, I just don't see a need to. There's only one shower area that I'm aware of, and there's always a line, and I'm not waiting in a line to have a shower. I, I go in the river every day, I spend a lot of time at the beach, and you're just gonna get dusty, like, right away anyways, so... I've personally never had a shower there. Maybe let me know in the comments how the shower situation is. I believe you have to pay for them. Bathrooms, the porta potties, I feel like there could have been more. Um, honestly, like the, they don't really have very many, um, especially in the campground. Like it was just not ideal. I feel like they do what they can. I will say they were on top of the like cleaning and they, they did a really good job in that aspect. I just 
felt like there could have been at, like add at least one or two to each line in the campground and just maybe one other area because it was a very long walk to get to them i don't know that's just a personal thing and honestly it didn't bother me that much but i feel like there could have just been a little bit more so yeah my final thoughts i had such an incredible year this year i feel like shambhala is just so special in a way that most people have a really hard time describing i just feel very blessed to have been able to experience it again after so many years i've done so much growing at shambhala and at festivals like that and it's really about the full journey so even though you know there's like negative things that might happen on it it's like such a lesson and such a teaching and such a blessing and i really think that they do such an incredible job overall the vibes this year were on another level i never saw anyone not having a good time um which is pretty rare and just everything like the stages the sound i feel like their production is just on a whole other level the atmosphere that they provide each stage is so unique and there's a flavor for everybody uh, it's just overall, it's such an amazing experience. It's such a funny place. If you've never been, you just have to go and see for yourself. We threw down. We had such an amazing time. Shout out to anybody who made it to our shuffle meet at the Pagoda. Hey. Um, it was such an amazing time. And I would go again 1000%. feel like I covered everything. I also feel like this video is pretty short. But I don't know. Let me know if I missed anything. I could have gone more into detail about some of the themed camps there. But I truthfully don't know a lot about the theme camps. I do love how there's like the camp clean beats and um, there's just certain other camps that are really supportive. I don't know, I haven't really gotten a chance to explore much of that this year. I was pretty much hopping from stage to stage, like the lineup this year was amazing. So I didn't really have a lot of time in between to like go on little adventures and side quests. Um, but maybe next year you never know we'll see we'll see if it's in the budget but uh, I would love to go again I had an amazing time maybe next year I'll be performing so I hope to see you there and if not I'll definitely see you at base coast so much love be well